Hello everybody, it's me, producer Ross, and welcome to another edition of the Monday Recap. I'm joined by good old Liam from Crew as we round up the weekend's action and look forward to the week ahead. Plus, take a look and discuss the news that happened last week. 2021 is started with a defeat for town. The same old story. Let's take a look at the weekend's action then, Liam. In town, a 3-2 defeat live on Sky Sports. The same old story, my friend. A disappointing result to start the year, my friend. Well, two words. Utter dross. Um, just, <laughs> I, I feel a bit sorry for Dryden. He isn't in the same class as Norwood, but um, I mean, the, the, the pace that Tam played at in that first half, I mean, even I think Messi would have struggled to have had any chances to score in that game. Um, but just the way the build-up play is, it just doesn't help our forward players whatsoever. Um, and then in this game, it's like the Shrewsbury game. They start so slow. And when you've got a team who are struggling, who are coming and thinking that probably the best result they will get is a draw. But if we can hold on, we might sneak a win. Now, Swindon are better than where they are in the table, I think. And I, I think if they carry on performing like that, then they may just about survive. But they're not great. They're not a great side. And Town let them get into the game by being so poor in that first half. And their confidence grew and grew and grew. And OK, down to Norwood made a difference. It, it's good to see them back. And that is one positive that we can be really happy about. But uh, it, it, you thought, yeah, there's only going to be one winner when Norwood got the equaliser. But the, the second goal, I mean, it's a, it's a wonder strike. But, I mean, it, it's the same sloppiness. It's that hunger to try and, and take the game by the scruff of the neck. Town have just got back into the game. You'd think everyone suddenly is buzzing and they're suddenly... Um, putting pressure on the Swindon players and making it really, really difficult. And um, for them to keep the ball and, and obviously get out of their own half. But instead, they give them 30 yards. And OK, you could try shooting that nine times out of 10. It'll go flying over the bar. Just on this one occasion, he's hit it into the right into the, the coin, coin slot in the top right corner. Um, but Again, nobody's closing him down. No one had the appetite to go and close him down and try and win the ball back. And and as I said with Norwood and um, uh, Downs, um, they did make a difference. And hopefully the rest that are due to come back will also make a little extra difference. But again, at 2-1 down and even at 3-1 down, how many... Last ditch blocks and tackles did Swindon have to make? How many saves did the goalkeeper have to make? We weren't battering down the door to get back in. It was a good goal for the second, the judge. It was a night well worked. But again, we, we didn't look like we were going to batter down the door and really try and get ourselves back in the game. And frankly, if we had snuck an equaliser in that last minute, it would have been daylight robbery. Let's get into this week then. Town on Saturday, they travel to Burton Albion. They play Burton again after, uh, of course, we finished 2020 with a win against Burton. But they go to Burton, who are still bottom of League One. Uh, they've got a new manager in Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank. But they did win 1-0 against Gillingham on the week weekend. But then their previous game before that was a 5-1 defeat against Oxford. So not a good result there. But how are you feeling going into this game? You know, the... The circle, as we say on this podcast and videos, has been broken. We were unable to beat a team in the bottom half. Um, and they're very much in the bottom half because they're bottom of the table. So how are you feeling going into this one? Uh, well, I, I'm not feeling particularly great about it. Um, I, to be honest, right? anybody in this division can beat anybody on the given day. There are results happening week in, week out, where teams are dropping points. And Town have been consistent against these sort of sides, and it was the top sides that 
they had a problem with. Of course, Swindon have, as you said, have broken that that little circle. Um, but for me, um, this is now a much bigger banana skin than I think what it would have been if we had beaten Swindon because they've got a new manager. They've got Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank back for his second spell. Um, and OK, they, they didn't have a good result at Oxford, but they are in supreme form and are coming right back, actually. Um, it's quite interesting to see that had crew, my, my, uh, my lot, um, held on to their 3-0 advantage at half-time against Rochdale. They would have gone ahead of us in the table. And Oxford, I think, after who were when we played them something like 20th, they, they, they are now like three or four points behind us and they could swamp us. And Town could easily be, in the next few weeks, could easily be back to the position that they finished last season and could even drop further. Um, and and that's the danger. And the likes of Burton now are going to have that revigored, um, a bit of revitalization in the side. Okay, it's the same players, but new manager, new ideas. You get that little bounce, and they've beaten Gillingham, um, who are not an easy side to beat. Um, and frankly, I, I can absolutely see Town sleepwalking into another defeat against Burton at the weekend. Um, I, ju- I just have no confidence whatsoever that they're going to do anything. And I, I really don't want to be the doom and gloom bearer, but all these people who have got their fingers crossed of all the injured players to come back, um, yeah, they will make a difference. Two players made a difference on Saturday for a half. Norwood's running in behind and Downs energy and 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 just just busyness, just mm. getting himself and about in midfield. I mean, he, he does have a bit of a bite to him as well. And, OK, getting booked after five minutes coming on is <laughs> maybe not the best thing, but he's putting his foot in, whereas other players just aren't putting their bodies on the line for the cause. Um, and I just, I just don't have have that sense of excitement that other people have that all these injured players are really that much of a difference. Let's remember, majority of these played last season and we had injuries here and there, but we finished 11th with the same set of players that are due to come back. So at the end of the day, I, I just don't see anything changing with the way that Town are playing because they don't play for 90 minutes. Um, and frankly, I, I have no confidence about this. Um, I think at the moment, uh, it, it, it could be the best result is a draw, which is just disgraceful mm. to say. But um, but the, the only upside potentially is, is that these two, if, if we did get beaten by Burton, and there isn't a real upside to that, but if we did, then that may trigger Lambert going out. And if we can get a new manager in, there are deeper issues at the club than just Lambert. But you can see with the players that we do have, if we had a manager who can get the players to play to their potential, then we should be okay and should be right up there. So frankly, it may not be the worst result in the world if we don't beat Burton. Um, But, the way uh, it'll be too late before anything gets done to save the season. So let's take a look at the news. And, well, a story that just broke this morning was about Freddie Sears being linked to Colchester, his former club, of course, the club he joined town from back in 2015. Um, it's very early stages, of course, but uh, it's believed that the U's are interested in bringing in the 31-year-old. He's out of contract at town in the summer. He's played... Pretty much a lot of games this season, scored a few goals, but he's one of those many players out of contract. And of course, with a salary cap coming in, I think he's pretty much going to be going out the door anyway. So, you know, your thoughts on this, Liam? Um, well, it's exactly what you said. Um, I think if, if he was banging in the goals pre-injury, a bit like Edwards, then you would say, maybe is he worth another year? Um, but he hasn't. 
he, he, to be fair, he's come back from a serious injury. Um, but he, a bit like Hughes, he, he hasn't looked the same player uh, having been out for so long. Um, we need someone clinical. We need someone with a bit of pace and a bit of creativity. And, and to be fair to Freddie, he's been played out in that wide slot again. But he, he just doesn't look like he's got that. He doesn't take players on and able to beat them. Um, and I, I just don't. Th- and if he is out, and he is out of a contract in the summer, so if you've got an opportunity now to maybe offload him um, and free up one extra space in the salary cap, and of course, let's be honest, the salary cap gets tighter in the summer. And there's going to be a lot of decisions that will have to be made in the summer about a lot of players, um, including Chambers and Hughes, um, who are two players who potentially could be forced out because of it, which I'm not against, by the way. Um, but Freddie would probably be in that category. Um, someone who's had a good time, but maybe we just need something different now. And if we can get him out in this window, then that gives Town one extra spot while we've got these two extra players in the salary cap. I think it's 20 in the summer, but it's 22 for the time being to bring another senior player in that they're talking about with creativity. They're asking for more creativity. So maybe that will give us a bit more room to bring another one in um, that will have a bit of extra creativity who maybe is a bit more senior. I know we're we're potentially looking at that Barnsley lad, but he will fit in the salary cap under 21. So he'll be OK. He won't be affecting that limit. But if we get rid of Sears, we might be able to bring someone in who could do that. But it all goes back to who who is available and who could do that. So it is a it is a tough one, swings and roundabouts. But if he does decide to go back to Colchester, then fair play to him um, and hopefully town could maybe um, make take an advantage of that and fill the slot with someone who could help um, change the direction the club is currently going in. But there we go then. The end of the Monday recap. Thank you as ever, Liam, for joining me. And uh, hopefully it's a better result this weekend. And I'm sure there'll be other different news stories happening this week. Will there be a signing? Well, I'll have to wait and see on that. But I've been Producer Ross. Thank you as ever for watching. Leave us a comment. Let us know your thoughts as well. We'd like to hear from you guys. See you later.